Congressman, great to see you again. Thank you. Um, any response to Nancy Pelosi accusing the CIA of lying to her yesterday? Well, I, I think it's great theater, and, and all this excitement uh, over the torture and the CIA, I think it's very beneficial because it distracts from the steamroller of big government going on in Congress, and hopefully it'll be beneficial. But it's also beneficial in trying to find out what's going on. But just think, we wouldn't have this uh, discussion if we had just followed the law. Our law uh, prohibits uh, torture as well as international law. But uh, the fact that this discussion is here and who said what is good, I have no idea who's telling the truth, but uh, I know it's, uh, it's very good for the country to get to the bottom of it. But unfortunately, sir, uh, now the story is really about Nancy Pelosi and the Speaker of the House and what she knew when, instead of, quite frankly, perhaps the discussion and the exploration of what we need to be doing as a country, whether it be following the law pertaining to torture or changing the rules. Yes, I, I know there are some shortcomings, but overall I think it's a benefit because she might slow up on nationalizing health care and further nationalizing education. Maybe things will slow up because we are quickly socializing the country and uh, spending ourselves into oblivion and bailing out all of Wall Street, so maybe that'll be a distraction from that. Mm. But uh, you're right, uh, maybe this will not lead to getting to the bottom of it because the administration's not all that interested in prosecuting the people who broke the law. You know, Ron, uh, I'm writing a book, uh, have written a book, uh, talking about the future of the conservative movement, and I tried to go back to figure out when the big mess began that <laughs> led to this collapse. And there were a few people, Peter Walson at uh, AEI, uh, and even the New York Times article that was written in 1999, warning about F Freddie and Fanny. Uh, a lot of warnings out there. Alan Greenspan also issued warnings. But I was stunned by reading a statement you made in the banking committee uh, yes. on September 10th, 2003. In fact, I reprinted the whole thing in my book. I want, to, I want Americans who hear leaders saying every day, we could have never seen this coming. This was a shock. How did this happen? I want to read what you said five years hmm. before the collapse. The special privileges granted to Fannie and Freddie have distorted the housing market by allowing them to attract capital that they could not attract under pure market conditions. Like all artificially created bubbles, the boom in housing prices cannot last forever. When housing prices fall, homeowners will experience difficulty as their equity is wiped out. Furthermore, the holders of the mortgage debt will also have a loss. These losses will be greater than they would have otherwise been had government policy not actively encouraged overinvesting in housing. And you go on to oh say because God. so many people will invest in housing, the damage will be catastrophic. Congressman, how could it be that you knew this on the banking committee in 2003 and nobody else did until after the collapse? Well, I, w I would think the easiest explanation is, is uh, Washington, D.C. is permeated by Keynesian economic thinking. Very few even know the name Austrian economics and understand the business cycle. I was concerned about the building of the bubble since 1971 when gold uh, was dealing from the dollar. So since that time, the bubble has been gradually being inflated, but it got out of hand in the 1990s as well as after 2000, Bernanke taking interest rates down to 1%. To me, uh, the biggest surprise was, although I was very concerned in 2003, I was concerned before that, I'm surprised it lasted to 2007. That's when the bubble really burst. But it was amazing how long it lasts. And to me, the more amazing thing right now is not only has the financial system collapsed, which is very, very bad and very dangerous, I believe that what we're moving toward now is the collapse of the dollar. And the collapse of a dollar, because it's the international reserve currency, I think is going to be much worse than what we have already witnessed. Can you all believe yeah, this prediction is, in mean, 2003? Prophetic. Absolutely prophetic. Talking to everybody on the banking committee, telling them, hey, we're in trouble. Let's not go this direction. Right. Or we're going to be in trouble. And then, you know, um, Ron, uh, somebody that probably didn't vote for you, uh, Columbia economist Jeffrey Sachs uh, came on this show and said what we're doing now with these economic policies is rebuilding another bubble uh, yeah, and creating debt, more debt.
Well, well, they're trying, but they're no, they're going to have a d difficult time uh, re reinflating the bubble. To me, what is disturbing is those individuals who did not predict what was to come are now predicting that the uh, that the downturn has has ended. It's over. At the end of the year, we're going to have growth. They're still listening to, to the Bernankes uh, of the world, and yet they were completely wrong before. Greenspan was wrong. Bernanke was wrong. But all of a sudden, oh, I know the end has come. That we we got into our trouble by spending too much, borrowing too much, and inflating too much, and now that's all they're doing, and now they're predicted, and they have given credibility of knowing how to predict the end well, of this downturn. That's Ron, to be astounding. Hey, Ron, not only that, the very people that sat in your committee when you told them what was going to happen remained silent. And in fact, some accusing you and other Republicans that were critical of Fannie and Freddie of being racists who hated poor people, those very people that missed all the warning signs were then put in charge of the trillion dollar rescue. But, but Joe, you got to you got to give them a, a little bit of credibility here on this argument because you know I was still on the fringe back in 2003. Nobody cared what I was saying. Now, now at least I have 100 or 200 people who care, so I'm getting a little bit more attention. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it isn't so much me. Uh, I'm just reciting what I've learned by studying free market economics, and and we haven't had free market economics. Now they're blaming capitalism for all these problems and not enough regulation. We've had crony capitalism. We've had inflationism, corporatism, big government. We've had no, we've not had true free market capitalism. So we have to define it. Somebody asked me once, who is the, who, what individuals the, caused this problem? I would put it all on the shoulders of Keynes. And you know, he's, it's a long time since he's been around, but Keynesianism exists. Remember what Nixon told us, we're all Keynesians now. That was when the last link of the dollar to gold was removed. And since that time, we've had nothing more, more than these bubbles and big government, but it is coming to an end. We can't yeah. afford uh, this foreign policy or these bailouts any longer. Exactly. We, we, are, we, are, we are out of money. We've yeah. got to show restraint at home and restraint overseas. Carlos. Uh, Congressman, to that point about restraint at home and restraint overseas, how would you cut not just the deficit, but the debt um, if you had the president's ear? Well, I would start overseas because politically it's more uh, more palatable. Uh, sometimes a conservative will come up and they'll have an amendment and cut 5% out of child health care. <laughs> you know, I don't believe in the government being involved in medical care, but that's not where I would cut. I would cut overseas spending. To operate our empire costs us a trillion dollars. So I'd bring our troops home. I wouldn't be, you know, we had this supplemental yesterday. The president asked for 84,000. What, what did the, uh, the, uh, 84 uh, billion? 84 billion. What, what did the Democrats do? They raised it by 14%, another 12 billion. The Republicans had one chance to cut uh, and and they, they had one amendment, and they asked to increase it by $3 billion. Congressman Paul, what, the Congressman Paul, but what else would you cut? Because as you just said, that wouldn't be enough. If you were just to cut defense spending, right. you still wouldn't get there. How about getting rid of the Department of Education and Department of Agriculture? Just go down the list. Get rid of it. Cut, it, cut the budget in half. But right. Everything that's not constitutional, that's a good place to start. And right. there's not much that we do that is. Congressman, thanks so much for being with us. Thank uh, you. Great talk.